Hello everyone, it's me, David Chen, and I'm here today to talk with Patrick H. Willems, the man behind the channel and the channel behind the channel that you're watching right now. Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, David. How are you? I'm doing okay. Patrick, I notice you're in different environs than what we usually speak in, right? What's going I, on? I am, yeah. Uh, I am, uh, I'm in my parents' house. Well, wow, you're just, you're, your camera's oscillating, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, I can like, sh yeah, I'm like, well, you've seen this is this in videos before, like, especially uh, last summer when I was here a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm here for a few days. Um, and I got here yesterday. And I think I'm heading back to the city Tuesday morning. Well, uh, I hope you have safe travels doing whatever you're doing, sir. Uh, and we are here, for those who don't know what, what it is we're doing, why are you here? What's happening? Why are these people talking at me? Uh, my name is David Chen. I host my own YouTube channel as well as some other podcasts. And basically, after every Patrick H. Willems video for the last, let's say, 14 months, uh, we have been gathering together on his second channel to talk about the last video he made. Uh, because as Patrick's videos become more and more impossibly intricate... <laughs> There is more to discuss for each video. So that, that, That's a really good way of summing it up. And by the way, one thing that I don't think I have ever said to you, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, the way you introduce me in these, which uh, the man behind the channel and the channel behind the channel, I'm like, that is so good and Thanks. so clever. Like, Thanks, I did not think of that. And, <laughs> and you've just been saying it casually for so long. I'm like, man, David is a pro. He's good at this. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I, I appreciate that. It, it takes so much work to think that stuff up. You know, <laughs> I spent like a good 18, I want to say seconds, <laughs> at least coming up with it. So anyway, uh, we're here to talk about your latest video, Patrick, about the most bonkers comic book movie ever, Dick Tracy. And I, I'm, so glad, I'm, I'm so glad to be talking with you about it. If, in fact, you are Patrick H. Willems. Spoiler. I, I, I mean, first of all, it would be strange if anyone watched this without having watched the video. <laughs> you know how there's all those people, when you listen to a director's commentary, they're like, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie because maybe you're listening to the commentary before you've watched the movie. Like, if a, all these directors, they're always like, they're always like, I don't want to spoil the movie. It's like, guys... I'm pretty sure we've already seen the thing, okay? I'm pretty sure we've already seen it. Right, and and I mean, sometimes I'll, like, watch or read an interview with a, a filmmaker, and, like, I, maybe, maybe I'll, like, stop at a point, because I'm just, like, I'm interested in just, like, what they're saying about lots of stuff, but I'll skip, I'll stop when it gets to the point about, like, their new movie that I haven't seen yet. But uh, in this case, this is so specifically <laughs> just about one video that I <laughs> assume most people here have watched it. So before, spoilers before ahead. Dive, yeah, spoilers ahead for the video. Before we dive into the video, though, Patrick, I think, uh, was this the first time you did a YouTube premiere for your video? Is that right? No, we did it for the, the baseball one first. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I didn't, um, uh, I did not catch that one. But um, it's like, what is your opinion on the YouTube premieres, basically? Because I know you did a YouTube premiere for this one. And, and yeah. for, those who, for those who don't know, what is a YouTube premiere? A YouTube premiere is – so normally the regular way you release a YouTube yeah. video is uh, when you upload it, you basically can choose if it's going to be private, as in the link is private. No one can yep. see it. Unlisted, where you can share the link with your friends, but it's not available publicly, right. or public, where it's just public. And to release a video, you basically just switch it to public, and then it pops up in people's like subscription boxes, and it's out. Um a premiere basically means that w instead of going public, it you set a time that it will go public, and it lets everyone know that oh, at like 8 p.m. Eastern time, this video and it and tells you the title and shows you the thumbnail ahead of time will premiere. Yeah. And then so the, like when I go to the YouTube app, I'll see like this will premiere at this time, right? Yeah. Right. And the the big the hook of it 
is that uh, when it premieres, there's like a countdown yeah. for like 90 seconds before it, and then it plays live. And so everyone watching is watching it together, and just like a YouTube live stream, there's a live chat. So everyone yeah. can talk about it uh, together. And so what happened with this was, with the baseball video, that was a rare case where I finished the... the normally I'm like frantically like... <laughs> you know, like, like a week behind schedule and trying yeah. so hard to like get a video done. And then I finish it. And I'm just like, whatever it's done out, out it goes. Right. Uh, right. And I just like toss out into the world with this one. I finished it. Good to know, by the way, that you put so much care into every component of the process. FYI. Exactly. I will say I do every time I upload a video, I, I make it private and I watch it through myself right. on YouTube first yeah. to make sure that there's no like egregious problems or like glitches with it. Um, I do, and I, I watch it through like at two times speed also. Uh, so it's faster, but, um, but with the premiere, with, with the baseball video, um, that one, it was done and I uploaded it and was just waiting for a while for the sponsor to approve it. Cause they have to approve the ad read before I can release it. And, and I was like, wow, I actually kind of have some time. I can kind of chill out and relax before, the video is released. Mm -hmm. And, and then I thought about it and I was like, and as soon as, and when they uh, approved it, I was like, you know what? Let's just try a premiere. Why not? And Cause I, I also knew that at the end of that video was the scene where Charles talks for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this could be fun. I'd like to kind of watch people react to that in real time. And so I tried it for that and it was really fun to watch, like watching the reaction to yeah. the final scene of the video was it like made my week. And so I decided, especially since we're entering this period with uh, the narrative uh, through all the videos where um, there's big developments in every video, I just decided that um, if I can, uh, assuming uh, like the schedule works out, I will just premiere all the videos going forward until the season ends. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so the advantage basically is it's probably the closest a YouTube person can come to watching their movie play in a theater with people, basically, right? <laughs> it, it really is. Like, right. like uh, watching the reaction to the end of the latest video, the Dick Tracy one, knowing that we'd been planning that scene in some form or another, but basically like that ending for over a year was, it was like a genuinely a thrill. It was so nice to watch the chat explode when we got there. And, uh, and I wouldn't normally have that without the premiere. Cause especially because I don't read the comments in general. Um, <laughs> so normally it's just but like, you make an I'm exception like, for the premiere stuff. I do. And I don't even check out all of them. I kind of like go, I like, I'll like walk away. Then I'll come back. I'll be like, Oh, I, I want to know. I want to see the reaction to this part. And, uh, and it was really fun. And so, and a thing that I've heard from some other YouTubers is that they, some people have found that, um, videos that they release with a premiere, uh, sometimes like tends to get fewer, like just like fewer views in total mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. other ones. Uh, I haven't found that. Um, the last two videos have performed totally normally. Um, I, I, I genuinely, the, the Dick Tracy one did better than I anticipated. So um, I haven't seen any drawback to the premiere. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm glad that the premiere thing has gone well. The advantage uh, basically being you can watch people react live. Disadvantage being you must complete the video significantly before the premiere date, right? Is that, is that basically the pros and cons right there? Yeah. Or, or at least like, you know, you want to give people at least a few hours heads up. I think, uh, I, I think that's it. I mean, for instance, I, what I wonder about is with actual, with, with viewers, if, um, if they see that a video has premiered like half an hour ago, is that a deterrence to them? Uh, because they're like, oh, now I have to deal with this like premiere thing. I just want to watch it normally. I don't know. I, I genuinely do not know. Right, um, right. I just know like in terms of numbers, um, I, uh, what I've seen has been totally fine and normal. So let's talk about Dick Tracy. It sounds like you basically got obsessed with this movie. 
and had to make a video about it. Is that that's that's the story presented in the video? Is that actually fact? Uh, more or less. Um, last about a year ago, you know, in like kind of the early days of quarantine, uh, when I, I just was watching a lot of movies, especially like movies that I had not seen before. And I went through a, a string of watching a lot of Warren Beatty movies, mm -hmm. uh, specifically ones he directed, uh, like Heaven Can Wait and Reds. And I had seen Dick Tracy when I was like, I don't know, seven years old and had Same. no, yeah, I had no it, memory of it. It was kind of like a big deal at the time when I saw it, right? Like w when I say big deal, I mean, it was like, it's one of my earliest movie memories was seeing Dick okay. Tracy in a theater. Oh, How about you, you saw it in a theater. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm dating little, myself, obviously. There, <laughs> I'm a little too young to have seen it in a theater, but th it was this period where I was just, uh, when I was a kid. I mean, not, this hasn't really changed, but I, I was around age like you know, seven or so. I was just obsessed with Batman, uh, and I wanted anything that resembled Batman in any way shape or mm. form because they're just like we're not really comic book movies back then right and right. so anything so like the shadow or our, our our dick tracy or whatever like those i was like great this is like it's it's like comic bookish uh like close enough i like give me that but I, I think i watched dick tracy like when it was playing us uh, i don't know in in the afternoon on tv uh just like that's that's how I saw it, and I hadn't seen it since. And then I watched it a year ago and thought this movie is absolutely bonkers, and I can't believe it exists. And I just kind of kept thinking about it for a year, and then finally decided, you know what? That combined with just the narrative of Warren Beatty's career is so interesting that I think it's uh, worth doing a video on. And also... I'm about to once again make myself seem like a fool. Uh, after the baseball video and the needle drops video, uh, I was thinking, okay, uh, I keep making videos that involve watching so many movies that mm -hmm. are just mm -hmm. these vast topics. I need to make the next one a little bit simpler and focus on ideally one movie. And I did that. The video is still 45 minutes long. <laughs> It still required watching a bunch of other movies for research to for like the context of Beatty's career. So I kind of failed, but mm. I tried to make things simpler. I tried. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're basically like Sisyphus, Patrick, <laughs> when it comes to the YouTube videos. You know, every time you're like <sighs> it's basically like, oh, this this next time is gonna be easier. Oh, I'm I'm gonna have so much free time after I make this next video. And mm -hmm. then it literally never quite ends up that way, you know? Uh, you are correct, but can mm -hmm. I just say, one thing that I'm so excited about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the next video, I, uh, I finished the script today. It is, like in terms of word count, mm -hmm. notably shorter mm -hmm. than the past several videos. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like... 2500 words wow. as opposed to 4500 that's words. like a that's like a pamphlet patrick that's like I it's like the back of a cereal box basically for you i know uh so apologies <laughs> to everyone who, who's always like oh no we want longer videos like like you know keep keep this going that's the every time i like I'll, I'll tweet about like oh my god i'm like why do I keep doing this to myself? I'm, this is like, this is agony. I, I'm so tired all the time. The replies are always like, oh no, we love it. Make them longer. Uh, make hour long videos, please. I'm just like, why does my audience want me to die? <laughs> it seems wow. cruel. Yeah, yeah, no, they literally are trying to kill you. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I'm just going to, first of all, start by betting that it's going to be longer than 2,500 words by the time we record the next commentary. Uh, I'm just going to, I don't think I'm going to lose money betting on that. Uh, um, so, well, I, I, I will say, I think the essay portion is 2,500 words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, uh, a couple weeks ago, part of the, the, the 
production period of the Dick Tracy video was extra intense because I had to also shoot a bunch of scenes for the next video, the one I'm mm. now working on, uh, just because of like scheduling right. stuff with cast members. So we've already shot a lot of this video and there is a, there's some pretty extensive narrative segments. So it might still be like longish, but mm. a lot of the hard work is already done. I'm just saying the, the essay stuff is uh, it's a little bit shorter. It's more manageable. And I, I feel really good about that. I'm like, I can still do it. I am still capable of I, writing a video. I, I guess length. I just feel like I've heard this, like this next video will be shorter and it never is. But well, you know I what? always say that before I write it and then I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, maybe you'll be wrong in a whole new way this time. No, I'm just joking. We'll see. You know we'll what? I, David, you say that as a joke, but uh, I probably will. I'm Look, I'm great at being wrong. So I, I just want to bring up one memory of, of Dick Tracy before we dive into anything else about it, which mm -hmm. is when I, when I watched it as a kid, I was like dazzled. This is like incredible just to see like all these colors and to see like a a character from a comic strip like become real life, you know, it was, it was quite amazing at the time. Yeah. And at the same time, I remember the movie being extremely unsettling as well. <laughs> as a child. And I'm assuming yeah. the makeup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, those characters are like nightmare inducing. The other thing I remember about this movie is that uh, a man named Charlie Corsmo plays the character Kid. Yep. Charlie Corsmo... Also, and I was like, I recognize that guy. He had appeared also in the movies What About Bob and Hook. So this yep. is a guy, this is a guy who is in Dick Tracy, What About Bob and Hook, three of the biggest films of my childhood. And then literally doesn't act again for another 20 years until 2018 when he was in a movie called uh, Chained for Life. When I Whoa. look up when I look up Charlie Corsmo, his bio, here's what it says. Charlie Corsmo is an assistant professor of law and the U.S. director of the Canada-U.S. Law Institute at the Case Western Reserve University School of Law, where he teaches courses in corporate law, corporate finance, and torts. Corsmo's article have appeared in the William & Mary Law Review and Brooklyn Law Review, among others. His scholarship has been cited by the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Second Circuit and in the New York Times, end quote. So here's a kid who was in like massive, like literally he was in a movie with Steven Spielberg. He was in a movie directed by Steven Spielberg. He was in a movie directed by best director winning director, <laughs> uh, Warren Beatty, right? Mm -hmm. And he was in What About Bob, which is like objectively one of the funniest movies ever made. Put aside any problematic stuff about mental illness in that movie. And it's very funny. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to go into law. <laughs> I'm going to go into law. He has, a, he has a path into movie stardom that, you know, millions of others are trying to get. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, you know what? I'm going to get my JD from Yale Law School, which is apparently what ended up happening. Um, I got to say good for him, especially because, you know, famously the transition from child actor to adult actor is incredibly difficult to do. Mm. And uh, especially as you like hit awkward like teen years, and it's like, oh, maybe you, like you were cute, but now you're like weird and awkward. <laughs> uh, he just didn't deal with that. He was like, no, yeah. I'm gonna. Well, sorry, I... sorry. Okay, so people in the chat are pointing out L2 Damon saying uh, he was in Can't Hardly Wait. So I don't want to. Uh, oh. I don't want to dismiss that. Where he definitely would have been a teen. Yeah, uh, but that's like uh, the only one he made. Right, like he made uh, can't hardly wait after Hook, and then nothing else for twenty years. So uh, he made Hook in nineteen ninety one, can't hardly wait in nineteen ninety eight, and then and then twenty years until Change for Life. Also, people in the chat are saying like my friend took one of his classes, which is pretty hilarious. Whoa, that's I mean that's really cool. That is really cool. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his filmography now. Yeah, now I'm curious, what did he do for the seven years between Hook and Can't Hardly Wait? <laughs> the topic of your next video, Patrick, I think. Yeah, yeah. That'll be it. And watch, it's going to be an hour long. So, 
Your most recent video asks the question, or, or one of the, I think one of the most interesting things about this most recent video is, uh, like, what is the, <laughs> my, my headphones are tangled in my chair right now. I just want you oh, to know. No. This is, we're doing it live, folks. There's no net here. We're doing it live. Um, so the question is, <laughs> Uh, what what lasting impact does a movie like Dick Tracy have? And, and uh, you, I think you were saying Michael Eisner had it both right and wrong. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh not, not Eisner, Katzenberg. Oh, sorry, Katzenberg, yes. Yeah. The, the extremely Libby. prescient Jeffrey Katzenberg. Uh, he, he, you, you basically said, like, we're going to put, A, put more controls on directors, and B, it's going to be less, uh, less movies that are kind of like these big blockbuster IP pieces. Uh, yeah. And he was half right, right? That's what was really interesting about it, because I did a lot of research on this. And uh, and because, like, you know, uh, Eisner and Katzenberg had run Paramount. They were actually running Paramount when uh, they were developing, like, the Star Trek franchise, when uh, Indiana Jones got started. And then they ended up, like, I think in the mid-'80s coming over and running Disney. And for a long time, because I was talking about at the beginning how Disney didn't have franchises. and uh, But they were doing really well with a lot of just, like, you know, mid-budget comedies and drama. Like, like the movies that don't get made anymore. You know, like, uh, I believe they made, like, Three Men and a Baby, which I believe was the biggest movie of 1987. Mm. Uh, that kind of thing, like not a blockbuster, like doesn't seem like a blockbuster, but it becomes a blockbuster. And then there was like this arms race of blockbusters. And, uh, and so they started like, you know, like putting so much money into these things. And the th one thing that I, I wish I had found a way to get into in the video. So one regret of the video, um, is I wish I'd talked about the marketing campaign for Dick Tracy more because an interesting thing is that. Dick Tracy itself, the movie, was not influenced by the 1989 Batman because it was in production before Batman even came out. But then because Batman was such a phenomenon, uh, they basically – Disney tried to just buy their own Batman where they had Dick Tracy. And so they just modeled the entire mar marketing campaign on the Batman one. Like one thing that I found fascinating is you know how – um, the movie poster for the 89 Batman doesn't actually have the title on it. Yeah, it's just it's, the insignia, right? It's Yeah, it's just the lo like the bat symbol and then the date, yeah, which is so, so cool. So badass. Because they know how iconic this is. Like, people know that's Batman. The, the poster, the original poster for Dick Tracy kind of did the same thing. Yeah. It has a like silhouette of Dick Tracy speaking yeah. into his watch saying, I'm on my way. And then like summer 1990. But the thing is, Dick Tracy, especially at the time, was not nearly as popular as Batman. But like the marketing campaign essentially gaslit the American public into believing they mm. loved Dick Tracy the mm. way they did Batman when like kids of the time did not care. But they, like they just put so much money into selling this movie that they basically bought themselves a hit. It was just inescapable because they just pushed it so hard. And that was a big part of uh, what Katzenberg then reacted to when he wrote that big memo where like the movie, it did well. It was the ninth highest grossing movie of the year, but it had gone way over budget because Warren Beatty cannot be controlled. And and then they put so much money into like selling it as this giant event blockbuster that it just like and it, like they had to divert so much effort from other parts of, of Disney just to focus on Dick Tracy. And uh, in the end, they were just he was like, this isn't worth it. Like we had all these other big hits that did not require that much money and that much effort and were not made by these directors that we had no control over. So let's not do that anymore. Let's, uh, let's get back to making like mid budget movies and, uh, that, that, that are like safe and do pretty well and stop worrying about, you know, giant blockbusters that are, you know, always trying to like beat each other for the, the biggest opening weekend. And, um, 
that part didn't really happen. Indeed. Uh, Barry Schwartz in the chat asks, do either of you recall the McDonald's promotion that accompanied Dick Tracy? I remember this. Right? I don't remember it, but it came up in my research. And that was also part of the marketing campaign. I remember it being like a pretty big deal, kind of like uh, the McDonald's Monopoly game. If, if I recall correctly, I'm not 100% sure. Right. But it, yeah, it was like, hey, McDonald's is already a huge deal. There were, according to like the original ads, it's like forty million dollars of prizes. Um, it, it was. Uh, I recall it being like a pretty big deal. I recall it being on the scale of like the the Monopoly game, which is like wow, you know. So yeah. You got Monopoly money there, Patrick. I know. Oh, can I respond to one thing in the chat right now? Please. Because this is this is clearly the the time where Patrick talks about all the things he regrets not putting into yes, the video. Yes, that's the point of this. Uh, of course, uh, this is it. There's only 132 people watching. This is where I can reveal what a fraud I am. Uh, L2 Damon <laughs> says, would you say the rules don't apply to Warren Beatty, Patrick? Um, before I actually wrote a word of the script in the, the notes, in, in like my, my note in my notes app that I had just to throw in ideas, the very first thing I actually wrote for this video was a joke about rules don't apply, which for those who aren't aware is the most recent film that Warren Beatty has directed. I wrote 2016 a... romantic comedy starring Lily Collins and Alden Ehrenreich. And Warren Beatty as Howard Hughes. Mm. Um, a movie that he had been trying to make since the seventies. Uh, but the first thing I wrote for this video was a rules don't apply joke. And then I could never find a place to put it in the video. I was just like, <laughs> I, I I had a joke, but no, it was like a punchline, but no setup. And, uh, and I just, in, in the end, I was like, I just don't know where to put it. And I did, didn't put it in and I wish I had, I think it well, would have been funny. Well, Patrick, now we need to ask you as an exclusive commentary bit for those who are here, what is the joke? for Rules Okay. Rules? So I don't know what the context would be. It would be talking about something Warren Beatty did, but mm. what I was going to say was, so I guess you could say that when it comes to Warren Beatty, rules don't apply. Yeah! Da -na -da -da -na -da -da. That's the CSI Miami, right? <laughs> exactly. And I was going to do the thing where I took off my glasses and then just put them back on. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the first thing I wrote. <laughs> and approximately uh, six people would have gotten that joke. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Um, so... Sam Trevelyan is saying, put it in the next video with zero explanation. <laughs> that would be incredible. That would be incredible. That, it, it, it would be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, let's get some, there's a bunch of good questions in the, in the YouTube chat, so I want to get to the questions. So let's get to the yeah. questions and then we'll wrap it up. But I do want to give a plug for my stuff, as usual. Uh, if you're enjoying hearing me talk, hearing sounds come out of my mouth, Check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Dave Chensky. Patrick, I've I, I've actually ended up in the in the opposite situation of you. Uh, really? At my YouTube channel, right? Here, here's here's your situation, okay? Your situation is you're doing uh, videos about stuff you care about and literally nothing else, like not even stuff that would be wildly popular. You know, you're doing that stuff. Okay, that's. that's I think your... I know what you're gonna say. Okay, me. I created a recap show for Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I discovered that I don't like the show very much. <laughs> so every week I do a little YouTube live broadcast about Falcon and Winter Soldier. And every week, literally 50 people descend upon that video to tell me how much of a dumbass I am. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, people might say, Dave, why are you continuing to do the YouTube show? Why, why would you do that? And, you know, there's there's benefits to doing the – like, I, I, it's my first time working with uh, my co-host on that show, Dan Gavostin. So I'm kind of like – we're just kind of like getting in the flow of things. There's only six episodes of the show. If this was like – if there was like 23 episodes in season mm -hmm. one, it would be a whole different conversation. Whole different conversation, right? If there, even if there's like 10 episodes in season one, whole different conversation. We are now four episodes into six episodes season one. So it's like, dude, you, I'm basically done already right now. Um, yeah, so. I, I, I mean, that's, it's, you know, it's a six week commitment. It's yes. not huge, but actually, I mean, this, 
Dave, you you have I mean, you are a veteran of like TV recap shows. You 100%. have done ma- many a, yes. a, a like TV like episode by episode podcast. Yes. Uh, like when you start, is it Decoding Westworld? Decoding Westworld, which was ranked by Recode as one of the top podcasts of the year. Nice. Um, Cast of Kings, probably like biggest podcast I've ever uh, been grateful to be a part of with my co-host John Robinson, who also did Decoding Westworld. But what was your question going to be? Oh, my question was going to be. Did you decide to do Decoding Westworld before Westworld premiered? Yes, yes, that's the thing. Well, first of all, for Decoding Westworld, it was literally the day it premiered, I think. It was like, or something very close to that. But this is the thing, Patrick, you know, when you go down these TV recap paths, you don't know whether it's going to be a huge show. You don't know if it's going to be a show you like. You don't even know if it's going to be popular, you know? And sometimes you just have to, like, send out your, your opinions into the ether and hope that, it's going to be okay. Of course, you know, this is the worst of both worlds because the, <laughs> the uh, at least with those other shows, when they had, like, seasons I didn't like, the podcast was popular. Right. Um, I, you know, anyway, point being, if you want to see me criticize Falcon Winter Soldier, YouTube.com slash Dave Chensky. That's Dave Chen, S-K-Y. Okay, let's get also, to just some... To, yeah. And just to be clear here for the audience, <laughs> those other shows, uh, Cast of Kings and Decoded Westworld, were podcasts. The Falcon Winter Soldier one is on YouTube. YouTube only, yes, that's right, that's right. Um, so people have a face to put to the name that they dislike uh, <laughs> on the YouTube only channel. Anyway, anyway, but you know, the, so you, you got to take a chance. You didn't know that the Dick Tracy, you know, this Dick Tracy video could have ended up being terrible. I mean, it wasn't, but you know, you I don't mean, know. Uh, because if you, told, if you told literally anyone else in the world, I'm going to make a Dick Tracy video. They would say, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? I, I mean, to be fair, David, <laughs> I think you could say that about a lot of my videos. 100%. Uh, I mean, last year, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure people would have said that uh, when I said, hey, I'm making a video about Mamma Mia, here we right, go again. Right, And uh, and, I mean, and it, fortunately for you, your hit rate is basically 100%. And uh, my hit rate's closer to like 60 <laughs> You know, and it's like you, sometimes you can't help what happens, what the hit rate is. Um, yeah. But I, I, but I appreciate. I don't know if that was encouragement, but at least understanding is what you what you uh, demonstrated just now. Let's get to some of the questions from the uh, the YouTube chat. So Esther Cuenca says, "Why do you think Warren Beatty is so desperate to keep the rights to this IP? Do you think he's actually going to do anything with Dick Tracy?" Um, I don't. Uh, think he is going to do something with Dick Tracy, but that said, um, from reading the pieces of the uh, the Peter Biskin biography of Warren Beatty uh, that I read, which everything I read is it's so entertaining and so fascinating, and I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's the same author who wrote uh, Easy Riders, Raging Bulls. Um, but uh, a thing that's consistent is Beatty tends to take much longer to make things than he plans to like he had been trying to get that howard hughes movie made since the 70s he almost made it with steven spielberg in the early 90s or at least like another version of it so he he's not always meaning to drag his feet so much uh he just is like kind of like a weird perfectionist who like wants to in his head get things right um with dick tracy i think also a big part of it is probably ego where he wants to be the only person associated with that character and probably doesn't want it to be like rebooted with, you know, he doesn't like, I don't think he wants a Spider-Man situation where it's like, Oh, now there's just a bunch of uh, Dick Tracy's and uh, right, we forget right. about the original one. He's how, like, would, he's, how would you feel you, the viewer watching this video, if you were Dick Tracy uh, and you poured years of your life into being Dick Tracy and then like later on some random Joe Schmo wanted to be Dick Tracy. You know? Yeah. If you're a nice, normal human, you might say, great, I love Rising Tide Lift All Boats slash Dick Tracy's. But if you're Warren Beatty, you might say, how dare that person? I'm going to do everything within my power to prevent that from happening. Right? Exactly. Also, and I, I mean, you know, the whole conversation about things like, you know, uh, copyright and 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 movie rights and who owns what is like a weird, complicated thing. But I, uh, I do kind of enjoy the fact that one guy owns the rights to this character instead of like Disney. <laughs> right. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, we're we're never gonna get back to those days, Patrick. Uh, nope. Kevin Willems in the chat. Is this is Kevin Willems like your brother or something? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Do I need to talk to my parents and ask them uh, if, if if there's like some long lost relatives? Kevin Williams asks, this is the second time relatively recently you've mentioned Speed Racer in a video. I know you made a Speed Racer video already. Have you thought about making another one? Um, the funny thing is I, I, I've i never actually full-on made a Speed Racer video. The one that I believe you're talking about is the, the – I think this – I've even changed the title to this video a couple times. It's the video kind of a, from I think 2017 about how important is – realism in right. film like about really like realism versus formalism and stuff like that uh speed racer is a big part of that video but it's not all about speed racer i've never made a singularly speed racer focused video uh it is a movie that i just bring up a lot and uh because i really like it and i also like there aren't a lot of movies like speed racer so mm -hmm. it's uh you know it's it's often like a good example to use for different things um i I'd be totally down for a speed racer video at some point. Um, I've just have never had like a, a really strong, a specific take that I wanted to like devote a whole video to so far. It's just that it, speed racer has been a great kind of like example to use in other discussions or like a counterpoint to other things. And, um, and so maybe one day, but, but currently no plans. Dennis McCune in the chat asks, is Dick Tracy the most over-the-top performance by Al Pacino? I, I already know the answer to this question is no, but I want to hear what your answer is. Because I, I have an answer for this, and it's no, and I have the, I have the performance in question. <laughs> and now I'm curious if you know what I'm going to say. You're not going to say Scarface, are you? No, I'm not. Um, um, Jack and Jill. You nailed it. You nailed it. A movie that I have Damn. not seen, but Damn, I've watched the Dunkachino scene many well, times. Well, well, Patrick, I mean, what I need to make you aware of, for those who don't know, are you familiar with the Twitter account Daily Dunkachino? Yes. <laughs> Probably single handedly justifies the existence of Twitter as a platform. Okay. The Daily Dunkachino website plays the Dunkachino scene from Jack and Jill every day, but as though it was made by a different director, basically. Like, that's the easiest way I can sum it up. So it's like Daily Dunkachino scene from Jack and Jill starring Al Pacino, but it's the Snyder cut. You know? <laughs> Daily Dunkachino, but it's in a Discord chat. And there's no microphone. It, it, it's just, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's daily Dunkachino, but it's the steamed ham scenes in The Simpsons. And it's just like, how, how is this even, this is like That's when I watch so... Mad Max Fury Road for the first time. I'm like, I don't understand how this brilliance can exist in a human mind. <laughs> that um, is, that's a Dennis Dugan film, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. And now I really wonder, is the Dunkachino scene yes, the single yes, most important thing in Dennis Dugan's filmography? Mm, mm. I think I've also heard about when people interview Al Pacino is <laughs> like, like ahead of time, like his handlers or whatever, make it known to not ask about the Dunkachino <laughs> scene. Or I think, I don't know if it's specifically Jack and Jill or the, just the Dunkachino scene, but that is a thing that is like off the table for Pacino interviews. I, so I don't, first of all, this is a guy who did Happy Gilmore, right? Which mm -hmm. some would actually regard as a good film. Uh, and also a film that was similar to Dick Tracy in my upbringing, Problem Child. Oh, you know, I've never seen it. You've never seen the Problem Child movies? No, I have not. Uh, I don't. I don't even know how. I just. I don't know. I'm. I'm a '90s kid, and I miss him. Uh, well, uh, there, there's a couple of like uh, dis disprovings of that being the most important scene. So, 
Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I remember the movie Problem Child is how I learned about the song Bad to the Bone <laughs> for the first time. Because they would play that mo- that song because you see the Problem Child was Bad to the Bone. Oh, so. oh c- kind of like uh, the T-1000 in Terminator 2. T-800, Patrick. T-800. Oh my god. I, I'm sorry. I'm uh, it's like it's after 10 p.m. and I'm tired. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm a fool. All right, let's see what other Wait, w- questions. Was the yep. question is Dick Tracy the most over the top Al Pacino performance? Yes, that's correct. Um. It, okay. It, that, oh, Gil- Gilbert I mean, Gottfried is also in Problem Child. Someone else is pointing out. Oh my uh, god! And that that was a big deal. That was like my first exposure to Gilbert Gottfried as well. So. Whoa. Yeah. Um, the thing, okay, the thing about Pacino, it, it, it's funny because uh, based only on the Doug Pacino scene, I would think, I, I would say that Jack and Jill probably a strong contender. Mm-hmm, the thing mm-hmm. with, with, with uh, Dick Tracy also is that since the whole movie is so exaggerated, he doesn't feel over the top the way, okay, like I adore Heat. I love the movie Heat. I love Pacino and Heat. But because so much of Heat is so like, like slick and like and and kind of muted and realistic uh and then pacino was so big it stands out so much mm-hmm. but then in dick tracy everything is so big right. that it's just like oh yeah no he's just a part of the world that's like it doesn't it doesn't seem as over the top e- even though it's a huge performance um and, wow this is honestly maybe i should just do a video about al pacino actor yeah, uh, could could be like a similar question to like Nick Cage. You you, you remember that that episode of Community that was about Nick Cage's acting? Yeah, is and is he like, uh, is he good or bad? Is he good or bad? And it's like hard to say, hard to say. Yeah, uh, I mean okay. the, the big question with Pacino uh, did did is it is Scarface the point where <laughs> he like diverges and like and like becomes a new kind of actor? Anyway. Big topic. Sebastian Castellano says, do you think we'll see another attempt at a gonzo look like Speed Racer and Dick Tracy? I dare Disney to do something like this to one of their live action remakes to give a director full control. I would say the closest we've come to something like that is probably uh, a movie written by a friend of mine uh, called Doctor Strange. (laughs) Uh, in terms of like a big budget film that has like a very interesting look to it, mm-hmm. uh, that's like kind of mind bending in a way. But yeah, I mean, it is it's still very much of a piece with the other Marvel films. But that's the one that immediately leaps to mind for me. Uh, right. In terms of movies that are like kind of like big budget studio temples that are like visually interesting. Maybe and, and a, maybe Aquaman too up there, right? I yeah, I would. I mean. The thing I, I did the whole video about Gonzo blockbusters last fall. Um, for instance, right. Like, yeah, you like, made a whole like, movie about this. I, I did. The thing is, like, uh, with Doctor Strange in particular, that's a movie that, like, the thing is, like, that has like a normal grounding, and then we'll go into sp- like specific sequences that are surreal. And right. um, I yes. would love to see a whole movie that looks entirely like the surreal stuff in Doctor Strange, start to finish. I mean, the the big thing, like, I don't think a Disney remake is going to do that. Uh, you basically need, like, if you look at, like, Speed Racer, um, the Wachowskis made The Matrix. And even if people didn't like the third Matrix movie, they still had enough clout to basically get, like, final cut and a huge budget from Warner Brothers. Uh, and then, like, you know, Warren Beatty could just do what he wanted for a long time and got to make Dick Tracy. Um, you, you really just need someone to just, you know, like, it, like if he's not going to, but if Christopher Nolan wanted to make something that aggressively, uh, like stylized, he could, but not many people have that power these days. Right. Right. Just in terms of like visual, like the ability to do something visually interesting. People are bringing up uh, Edgar Wright as a really great example, right? He could so, potentially. The thing is, Edgar Wright hasn't made it. Like his movies are usually mid-budget movies. Right. I'm curious to see his next film. Uh, uh, Frank Clark says Edgar Wright's Ant Man might have been uh, crazy if made. Just speculation. And Jason Lady is saying Scott Pilgrim. 
Are you planning to go see Scott Pilgrim when it comes out in theaters this this month, Patrick? I have had my tickets for weeks. Are you serious? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, April 30th. I'm uh I'm there. I'm very excited. I'm planning to check it out too as well if I can. Okay. Nice. Um let's end with this question. Anarchy asks Is Kong versus Godzilla Gonzo film also, thoughts on the films before it? Are they any good? Thinking of watching them, starting with Godzilla 2014. Uh, you watched Godzilla vs. Kong in a theater recently, so just curious your thoughts on on that franchise. Yeah. Or, yeah, uh, yeah uh, last Monday, I went. Uh, I returned to a movie theater for the first time in over a year, saw Godzilla vs. Kong in IMAX. Uh, uh, I had such a good time. Uh, it was also a thing where I was like, I think this movie's pretty good, but also pretty much anything on this screen that playing this loud would just make me happy right now. So I, right. I was just like, it was very hard to be like, you know, you know, kind of give, give I mean, give it like, not that I'm, I watch anything like objectively, but, uh, but it. It was the kind of situation where um, it was hard not to have just like my emotions about the experience kind of like color uh, my my impressions. But um, I I as yeah I had a great time. Uh, and I felt like the movie understood what it was. I also I, I noticed um I, I I was really flattered by this. Uh, on Polygon, uh, Matt Patches in his the intro to his interview with director adam wingard uh uh cited my gonzo blockbusters video and said that this he considered this film as like fitting into that group that i had talked about uh in that video and i i I like i i i kind of agree i think it it's like more gonzo than i expected um and as far as the other recent uh, MonsterVerse movies go, I've only seen – I haven't actually seen Godzilla King of the Monsters. Uh, and I saw the other two, Godzilla and Kong Skull Island, once each. Um, I don't have especially strong feelings about the franchise. Um, I feel like I should revisit them all. I did – I just read um, – David, have, did you read – uh, Matt Zoller Seitz's article, I believe it was called My Heart Belongs to the Monsterverse in Vulture that came out a couple days ago. I did see it. I didn't read it, unfortunately. It's a really, really good piece of film criticism just about uh, basically his, his take just that these he loves this franchise and he thinks it's the most interesting like American uh, blockbuster movie franchise of the past decade or so. Uh, it's like, even if, like, whether you agree with it or not, it's just a really good piece of film writing. All right, I will check that out. Okay, I think we can wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for listening to us talk about a bunch of random stuff as usual, and be sure to check out, I was going to say be sure to check out Patrick's video, but as we said at the beginning, you already have seen it, hopefully. Uh, if you enjoyed this chat, check out my stuff at youtube.com slash Dave Chensky. That's Dave Chen S-K-Y. Thanks for watching. Patrick, take us out, won't you? Uh, yes, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, to the people who were asking me to talk about uh, the twist at the end of the video, I'll just say uh, we've had this planned since January 2020, and keep watching because we have fun stuff coming up. Uh, everyone, I hope you're all getting those good old vaxes, and... We'll see you back here for the next one. Bye.